Okay, tomorrow's testing day. I need to put some hydraulic oil in the tank. I put a little bit in today, but I need to fill it and put some diesel in the tank and hook up the battery. I need to adjust the, the pressure on the joystick down to about 1400 PSI. So I got a gauge hooked up right now. We'll get that done and, uh, and then we'll put it all together and uh, see how it runs. Well, it's finally finished. Started out life as a 1963 Panzer and was modified into what you see today. It's got a little mini loader on the front. It's all hydraulic drive. Got a little vacuum gauge for the um, suction line. There's the throttle. It's got a glow plug if you need it. So far it just starts pretty well. Sixty-three Panzer I got in about 2001 and I've played with it on and off and changed the motor from a six horsepower Briggs to a seven horsepower Kubota diesel water-cooled. It's the original grill, original axle and wheels. There's the pump married to the motor. And the hydraulic tank is nested inside the original grill there. And you just push on the top lever and you go forward and these are the, the original wheels and these are wider fenders than the original Panzer. I got these at Tractor Supply. That's the original seat. And back here, this is pretty much an original view except for the fenders, of course, and the battery box. I designed the battery box to take a lithium battery. That's the original toolbox offset. It used to be almost centered. The Panzer implement lever. Of course, the dashboard is anything but original Panzer. It was routed on an NC router down in San Diego, my brother has. And then we uh, took testers' model paints and filled the engraving and then cleared it. And then the voltmeter, because it's lithium, it's obviously a little higher voltage. And I got a dune buggy brake master cylinder and then a single line that runs down underneath the motor here to the back and splits and uh, even though this is an original Panzer differential they had mechanical brakes so still had the brake drum and the one brake shoe from a 1954 Belvedere or whatever but I added hydraulics so now the brakes they're not cutting brakes anymore they're hydraulically actuated. That's the original cowling. Did some modifications to be able to nest the, 
the joystick in there. It's got about a 45 and a half foot reach to full dump. And uh, it's, it's quite small. Several years ago, I got the Kubota water-cooled diesel and it's, a, it's an EB300B, I think. EB300B, I think. Anyway, it's um, a military surplus and uh, on uh, eBay, gosh, I don't know, maybe 2009, 2010, somewhere there was a whole bunch of these that a guy was selling on eBay and I picked one up and that's when the Panzer was decided to be diesel powered. And because it came with this blind internal shaft, and I looked on Surplus Center and I could marry a pump to it, that's when the whole thing was kind of redesigned to be a diesel operated front end loader. The original frame I cut and dropped three inches so that I could fit the diesel in. I also had some custom bent plates to go in here and and uh, so that the motor could be mounted lower. I also have the motor mounted on these um, on these isolators and that's really nice. The motor dances around quite a bit but it doesn't really um, affect the tractor too much. There's the hydraulic drive motor kind of peeking out from underneath the, the cowling there that's chain driven to the differential. All right, the end of the first day and I had the tires on backwards in the back, so I just fixed that. It ran good. I need to slow down the bucket and the boom significantly, so I gotta look for something online to slow that down. I knew that the joystick would be too powerful for, for this, but I didn't realize it was going to be as bad as it was. It's like a trebuchet. It could launch a basketball like three or four feet in the air. All right, well, I tried putting a flow control valve in, uh, in line with the, the power beyond port on the Prince valve here. And that was a complete fail. It bogged the motor down. I couldn't even hardly start it unless I pushed on this pedal a little bit to relieve some of the pressure. So that was a fail. So now I'm going to be doing a flow divider. And I've had to take the cowl off and the dash off to be able to get into and, and uh, get to these fittings. But one th other thing that I noticed is that this is the diesel tank and there's that, that vent that you see right there. This guy. It's not sealed. For whatever reason, that came loose, that little fitting in there. So I have to seal that. I'll take care of that leak. And as soon as the uh, flow divider comes, then uh, I'll put that in and hopefully it'll work. So here's the priority flow divider that's coming from Surplus Center. Thing is um, over four and a half inches wide and uh, four and an eighth inches tall or should I say long, and uh, almost uh, one and three quarter, I guess one and three quarter tall. So that has to go underneath here. Take out that flow restrictor thingy and it's gotta go there. So that's, uh, that's gonna be tough because there's not a lot of room. And I'm gonna have to take the uh, half inch return line right here. Take this guy off and cut it, put a T in, so that I can have two return lines going to the main line. We'll see if it works. The divider valve came, so it is massive compared to the Panzer. And I thought that I could mount this divider valve underneath the tractor, and uh, it's got um, 3 8 pipe thread on the input, and then also both outputs here. But it's one and three quarters tall and four and a half inches wide and four inches long. And so I thought that I could put it underneath the tractor. Basically like kind of right here, it has to attach to that JIC fitting that you see over here, right there. But because of the chain and the um, 
forward reverse lever here. So I'm gonna have to mount it up above in this area here. And there's the the Panzer, the Panzer um, cowling that goes here. And if you look right here, there's a little witness mark where the cowling comes down. This is the end of it here. And then it, it tapers up to this, uh, right about the bottom of this rubber um, plunger here. And so I think I'm gonna have to put that that valve right there. Sitting on top of this brake line here. And then the input's over here, but it's gonna have to go around the pumpkin and then down here and around to the Prince Power Beyond port. So this is gonna be a little difficult to get this to work. Well, I got the priority flow divider valve in. And the problem that I was having was this, this pump is 7.8 gallons per minute, and it runs to the, the Prince valve right here. It's a single spool, open center, and I have a power beyond sleeve in it. And that was a half inch line that then went to the, to the joystick. Joystick is a 10 gallon per minute joystick, and I have such small cylinders installed on it. It was just like a... A catapult. So I made sure that I had enough room and I could take that cap off there and adjust it, but I'll have to do it before I put the cowling on. Um, the other thing that I did was because all of the, the fluid has to go through this line and then through the valve and then back to the tank while it's just sitting here, uh, I thought I better go back to a half inch line. And so that's the reason why it goes around the pumpkin. I started designing this when I didn't have any hydraulic understanding. So for all you hydraulic guys out there, um, you're probably cringing and and uh, this has been kind of a learning experience and it, you know to be honest it's really not going to be used a whole lot. All in all I'm pretty pleased with the build and it, with any new build with any new design you're always going to have a lot of little idiosyncrasies and I was expecting that. Um, so I just need to test it now and fill the tank. Right now the tank doesn't have any fluid in it but uh, so I'm gonna fill the tank. But the other problem I had was the, uh, the fuel tank, which sits right here, was leaking. And I thought it was one of the fittings on top on the vent. Then I noticed that the tank has a uh, spot on the side of it that was just oozing. It was leaking right on this end right here, right where that red yellow circle is, just barely oozing out. So what I have right now is the diesel is is lower, it's um, it's lower than this point here, and it's just sitting here, and I'm just checking to see if there's any other leaks. Uh, I'm gonna sandblast that little area, and then I'm gonna use this uh, marine weld here. Well, the tank's been sitting here for several hours now, and I'm using this black light to see the any diesel leaks, and I'm just not seeing any. Okay, it's the next day, and uh, we're out to the FUBAR factory to check the diesel tank to see if it's leaking. All right, here we are. All right, no leaks. Okay, so I sandblasted it and I prepped it a little bit. I knock that little hunk off that was on the outside, try to sand it flat. And then I was looking inside here. And right there, see that dark spot kind of off to the right? And then you see some light coming through. So it's not a rust spot. It's definitely from a MIG welder. Probably the, the wire touched for some reason. Bummer.
so the flow divider worked. It fixed. It fixed the problem. So I have the screw on the flow divider, which is under this cap right here, almost all the way in. So I'm probably running like two and a half gallons per minute through the, the joystick and seems pretty smooth. Uh, the tilt's still a little too fast, but the it raises nicely. And so uh, I'm gonna let it cool off for a little bit, check for some leaks and uh, put it back together the rest of the way. Well, as I thought, there is a little bit of an interference between the flow divider and the cowling here, but it's so small that I don't think it's really gonna cause a problem. It flexes down pretty easily, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah, just keep putting it together. All right, the Panzer is all back together. Uh, no leaks, and the uh, flow divider worked like a champ. It slowed down the boom and and uh, the bucket tilt, so now it's not like a catapult. And I'm really happy with that. And uh, I've had a few people ask me why the loader uprights are inside your legs rather than, than outside your legs. And uh, I wanted the tractor to look proportional. Um, if you saw this from a distance, you would think like maybe it's a much larger tractor until you walked up to it and realized how, uh, how small it is. The uh, Panzers were, were so unique. This 1963 Panzer has that, that 1954 Belvedere rear end in it with the brake backing plates and um, this cool tractor seat and what looks like a, like a Model T steering wheel or something. and um, the, uh, the cast iron grill. And so I, I really wanted it to look proportional and um, kind of look like uh, just a, a miniature scale down tractor. And I, I, think, I think I succeeded. I'll tell you though, it was one hell of a bitch though, fitting all the hydraulic lines in there. I don't think I ever want to do this again. It was, um, there was a lot, of, a lot of nights where I went in and I was pulling my hair out, trying to figure out what to do. One thing that I wanted to show you was, if yeah, you've seen some of the other clips that I have, the, this aluminum dashboard that I made, and it came from a, an I-5 sign that somebody knocked down and then threw into a dumpster. It was really tortured. Somebody ran over it uh, quite a few times and it was bent pretty badly. And I cut the best corner out of it and uh, did my best to get rid of most of the marks, but you can still see some of these marks. There's these little little marks right here and there's another set right here. All right, well, thanks for watching and let me know what you think of this little tractor. Uh, leave some comments for me. And if you have a Panzer, you might wanna tell me about your Panzer. And uh, I'll, let me apologize now for painting it something other than the turquoise blue, but um, I, just, uh, I just was really opposed to that color. I'm sorry about that.